What's going on, guys? Uh, this segment here, we're going to be talking about New York Giants stat predictions for 2022. And the first player we're going to do today, why not Mr. Daniel Jones? So tune in and figure out and figure out what you what I think Daniel Jones will do in 2022 for the G-Man. Let's get it. What's going on YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, all platforms? Thank you guys for tuning in to another episode of Giants Talk with Big Pass Sports Talk. You know I'm going to talk my talk no matter what you thought. And today with video, we're going to be doing Giants Stack Predictions for 2022. I got a lot of these videos I got to make. So, hey, this is the month to do it before we get into training camp and everything. And today... We're going to be talking about Mr. Daniel Jones. Yes, Mr. Daniel Jones, the, Daniel Jones, the enigma himself. The guy that's caused so much controversy between the Giants fan base, Giants media. This is the guy everyone loves to bash. Or this is the guy, if you say that he's not trash, you're, you're an apologist. Yeah, this guy. The most controversial name in football, maybe. <laughs> in all honesty, this guy may have the most controversial name in football. But let's get into it. Let's talk about Daniel Jones a little bit. And I'm going to give you guys my giant stat prediction for Daniel Jones in 2022. So let's get it. Let's get to the film room. All right, man. I love this room, man. I love talking to you guys in the film room, man. This is so cool. Like talking. Okay. But let's get to Mr. Daniel Jones, man. Mr. Daniel Jones, number eight for your New York Giants experience, four years, 6'5", 230, might be a little bit bigger than that now, age 25, went to Duke College. As you all know, he was the sixth round, uh, the sixth pick overall by the Giants in 2019. Uh, he was actually one of three uh, total draft picks in 2019. Uh, looks like all, I mean, him, Dexter Lawrence, and I believe uh, Baker. Uh, it may turn out that all three of them uh, may not pan out, but who knows? You say it was just the third quarterback selected by the Giants in the first round of the NFL draft in our history. His first two seasons, Jones played 27 games, which starts in each of his last 26 appearances. His totals are 907 attempts, 564 completions, around 62.2. Uh, it's kind of low. Uh, you normally want your quarterback around the 65 to 68 range at least. He's passed for almost 6,000 yards, 35 touchdowns, 22 interceptions, and a passer rate in 84.1. That is not good. Uh, the passes, the completion, yards totals are more, most in franchise history through 27 games for a player who began his career with the Giants. So that's pretty good considering. Um, let's look at his last season stats. Not great at all. Uh, nine touchdowns, only seven interceptions, only 2,428 yards, and 83.89 rating, which is not good at all. Um, let's look at his games last year. We can go over his games last year real fast. Uh, against the Broncos, you know that was a loss, 20, uh, 27 to 13, 22 completions of, 30, uh, of 37 attempts, 267 yards, one touchdown, sacked twice. And lost the fumble. Fumble once, lost the fumble. The football team had a very good game. The stats could have been way more than what it was, but we lost that game as well, 30-29. to 29. Once again, 22 completions of 32 attempts, 249 yards, one touchdown. He was sacked four times. Uh, 
man, had nine uh, carries for 95 yards and a touchdown. The Falcons lost again, 17 to 14. He was 24 of 35, 266 yards, sacked twice, 39 yards rushing, two fumbles, no loss, none lost though. We beat the Saints. He was 28 of 40, best game of the season, 402 yards. Uh, one touchdown, one interception, 27 yards rushing, uh, was not sacked in that game, and no fumbles lost. Cowboys, this is the game we got the concussion, uh, completed five passes of 13 attempts, 98 yards, uh, was not sacked, nine yards rushing, no fumbles, no fumbles lost. Uh, the Rams, 29 of 51, not good at all, 242 yards. Three interceptions, horrible game, his worst game of the season. Sacked four times, two fumbles, one loss. Panthers, 23 of 33, 203 yards, uh, one touchdown, sacked twice, no fumbles, lost. Chiefs lost 20 to 17, 22 completions of 32, 222 as yardage, two touchdowns, one pick, sacked three times. One fumble, none lost. Raiders beat them 23-16, to 15-20, 110 yards. Did not have a lot of yards, but he was very efficient that game. We ran the ball pretty well that game. One touchdown, sacked twice. One fumble, one fumble lost. Buccaneers got beat down 30-10, to 23-38, 167 yards. Terrible. One touchdown, two picks, sacked twice, no fumbles lost. Against the Eagles, we won 13-7, 19-30, 202 yards, one touchdown, sack once, no fumbles lost, and you know that he did not play the rest of the season. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, those stats are not good. Nothing on nothing on that stat board jumps off the board to you saying that this guy's a great quarterback, but the deficiencies that he had with the offensive line, I know guys are tired of hearing, uh, hearing it. He has a better new offensive line this year, so he better do something. I'm I'm the type that, hey, look, I'm a, a realist. Yes, he hasn't had the, the talent around him, but it's been four years, so if he can't do anything this year, we just got to let him go. But uh, his previous season, 2019, 13 games played, 12 started, 284 completions out of 459 attempts, 3,027 yards, 24 touchdowns, 12 inch sack 38 times. Uh, two rushing touchdowns, 18 fumbles, lost 11 in his rookie year. Second year, 14 games played, 14 games started, 280 completions out of 448, 2,943 yards, 11 touchdowns, 10 interceptions. Yeah, it's not looking good. Rushing yards, 423, one touchdown, 11 fumbles, six loss. Uh, last year, only played in 11 games. 232 completions, 361 attempts, 2,428 yards, nine touchdowns, seven picks, two rushing touchdowns on 298 yards rushing, seven fumbles, three loss. So he's had a total of 36 fumbles and then lost 20 of them. So, I mean, the turnover issues are very, very valid. They're very valid. I'm going to be honest with you. They're very valid. Um, but he has calmed down his fumbles over the last two years. So uh, he has fixed that fumble issue. And he, he really doesn't have a great problem throwing interceptions, a matter of the perception about him or not. You can believe what you want to believe, but uh, he's not a, a high interception thrower. But what he does need is he needs a team around him. And I think he has a pretty good team around him. And I believe he has a pretty good coaching staff that's going to get the best out of him. So... Going into this season, what I believe Daniel Jones can do as far as a quarterback for this team, I think he can develop into being that guy that can get us victories as far as making good, clean, crisp passes. And let's see if he has a good good pocket this year. Let's see if he can work the pocket like some of the best quarterbacks. He hasn't proven that he can do it, but I think he can. He has the athleticism to do it. And I honestly think that the RPO actually works a lot with him. The RPO is just not a running offense. The RPO gets the defense on their heels. It makes those linebackers make a choice. So if we have a better run game this year with Daniel Jones, I could see him having a very, very good season. 
because that RPO is going to make those linebackers come up, and we have a bunch of a plethora of weapons that could work across the middle. Let's see if Daniel Bellinger could turn into a tight end that he can depend on. He never, he's never had that security blanket because Caden Smith got hurt and then he fell out of favor with Joe Judge. And the greatest thing about this season with Daniel Jones, he's not working with Joe Judge or Jason Garrett. He's working with Brian Debo and Mike Kafka. Let's see what this can do for this kid. Uh, he had, I believe he has a lot to offer. And let's see what he does. Let's see what he does. Let's see if he can earn that franchise tag because he's not going to earn He's not gonna earn a, a, a huge contract. Just going to be honest with you. He's not going to earn a huge contract by having one good year, but he will be, you know, franchise tag. So let's see what he does. Jones was the first rookie quarterback in NFL history with two games with 300-plus pass yards and four-plus touchdown passes, and he had three of them. So the people that say Daniel Jones has never shown any flashes in his career, that's just not true. He threw at least one touchdown pass in his first 13 career starts, the fourth longest streak among quarterbacks who started their career since 1970 merger. Uh, Name team with touchdown passes the years, Kurt Warner, 23 with the Rams in 2000, Baker Mayfield, 17 with Cleveland in, in 2019, and Brad Johnson with Minnesota with 15 in 96-97, a Brad Johnson sighting. Daniel Jones with 13, 2019-20. So he's shown flashes. You, you're lying to yourself if you say that Daniel Jones didn't show you any promise in his rookie year. The only thing you could have said about Daniel Jones' rookie year was the fumbles. And like I said, Peyton Manning led the league in interceptions in his rookie year. Rookies are going to make turnovers. Rookies are going to make mistakes. Yes, he's been making mistakes after that. But as you can see that a lot of our players after their rookie year have gone down. Daniel Jones, Saquon Barkley, O'Shane Zimenez, uh, Carter, uh, Dexter Lawrence. A lot of these rookies that we had go down after their rookie year because of the coach and Slayton. That's another guy that went down after his rookie year. Caden Smith went down after his rookie year. So it, it, it was a bad culture with the Giants. I'm not putting everything on coaching. I'm not saying that the players are not accountable for anything. But, yeah, they the coaching made a lot of mistakes with these people. But let's get into what you guys came here for. I'm going to give you uh, Daniel Jones stat prediction. For next year so let's get into it all right and for the people that's already looking at the screen and said pat you are absolutely out your mind i'm gonna give you reasons why i think that he would do this daniel jones 2022 stats passing yardage i'm gonna go with 4128 i think he breaks the 4000 yard mark this season with the receivers that we have and Kadarius tony wandell robinson shepherd galladay daniel bellinger Ricky Seals Jones with a better offensive line, a motivated Saquon Barkley. I think, and with Brian Dabo and Kafka working their magic with this offense, I think Daniel Jones can have his best season yet, and I think they can get the best out of him. But let's see. That's just my prediction. It's my opinion. I know I'm going to get bashed in the comments. Bring them. Bring all the comments you want. Bring all the slander that you want. This is just my prediction. This is my opinion. And I definitely want to hear you guys' opinion of what he could do in 2022. But I got him with 40 and 128 pass yards because we have a plethora of weapons. And if those guys stay healthy throughout the season, I don't see a reason why he can't get the ball to those guys and we can put up some yardage. Rushing yards. I'm going to give him 364 because of the RPO plays and everything. But I think they're going to tone his rushing down. 364 may be a little high, but I think he could break off one of those big 60-yard runs that he usually does. Maybe we could break off two or three of those and get a consistent 20 to 30 yards a game rushing. Maybe you get about 364 yards throughout the season. We'll see. Passing touchdowns. I think he breaks the 30 touchdown mark this year. 31. If he threw 24 in his rookie year with, a, uh, with the system Pat Sharma created for him, I don't see why he can't throw up 31 touchdowns with better, better weapons, a better system, and better coaching, and a better atmosphere with the Giants. I'm going to give him 31 touchdowns, 31 passing touchdowns. 
rushing touchdowns. I don't think he's going to be due too much rushing. He may get a couple of quarterback sneaks or sneak in there. You know how they like to do with the five receiver set and let him do the quarterback draw. I can see him getting a couple of touchdowns that way. I'm gonna let him. I'm gonna uh, let him get three rushing touchdowns this year. We'll see. Interceptions. I got him with 13. Reason why I got him with 13. He's not a huge interception thrower, but I think Brian Dable is gonna give him the option to let the ball loose this year. And sometimes it doesn't work out. Sometimes it may be picked off. It may be tipped up in the air or something. But he's not a huge interception thrower. He's not a huge interception thrower. But this will be the most interceptions he's thrown in a year. And when you throw more touchdowns, you're more you're more than likely going to throw more interceptions. It just depends on how it works out. But I got him throwing the most interceptions in his uh, in a season in his career with 13, which ain't bad. If you throw 31 touchdowns, only 13 interceptions. Hell. That's more than double uh, the production of touchdown to interception ratio. So I'm cool with that. And I got him losing four fumbles. I have him losing four fumbles. So he may have like seven or eight fumbles this year. It, it, it just happens. I, some quarterbacks are just prone to getting strip sacked or something. But let's see if this offensive line can stop that from happening. But I got him losing four fumbles. I'm going to try to be as realistic with this. As possible, I know a lot of guys are looking at me like, dude, you are absolutely nuts. There's no way he throws for 4,000 yards. There's no way he throws for 31 touchdowns. But they were saying the same thing about Josh Allen before uh, Stephon Diggs and them got there, and he went through the roof. He didn't even have a 300-yard passing game before Stephon Diggs and them got there when they got that system fully implemented and it got all the players that they want there. So let's see if this can happen with Daniel Jones. No, I'm not comparing him to Josh Allen. So get that out your brain. I'm not comparing him to Josh Allen. What I'm comparing him to is being able to be able to progress with a system that around him and with a coaching staff that believes in him and lets him play. It's not holding and putting shackles around him and telling him not to do anything. Just don't turn over the ball. That doesn't win games. That doesn't win championships. That doesn't bring a winning culture to your team. And I was wrong about that. I can admit I was wrong about that. Joe Judge, coach of the team, must have been toxic. Had to be. So I was wrong about that. I can admit my wrongs. But I truly believe with the help of Brian Dable and Kafka and with this system, with the weapons we have, with Wondell Robinson, Tony, Shepard, Galladay, Barkley, we have so many avenues the way we can get yardage that I think that we can get some yardage with this team this year. So... 4,000 yards, hope he does it, but hey, if he doesn't, hey, I'll eat my crow again, but this is my stat line for Daniel Jones in 2022, and I just think that he can do it, man, and why not think that he can do it, because if he puts up stats like this, like these, we're winning games, folks, and that's what I want to do. I'm not going to continue to be negative and continue to bash these players and bash this team and bash this organization and then turn around and get mad when they don't win. You're already bashing them. So you already expected to lose. So what you mad for? I'll continue to say that. What you mad for if you continue to bash this team and bash every player and, and then when they lose, you act surprised they lost. It does, that doesn't make sense. But let's get back into the studio and we're going to wrap this up. So those were my stat predictions for Daniel Jones in 2022. I'd like to thank you guys for watching. Positivity here with the New York Giants. Go Giants. Uh, this is the end of the video, so hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Leave a comment. Tell me how crazy I am because most people that watch this video and Giants fans are going to tell me I'm absolutely nuts. I already know it's coming. <laughs> but, hey, it's all smiles and it's all good around here with Big Pat Sports Talk because I'm going to talk my talk no matter what you thought. And I definitely love you guys' opinions. So go ahead and leave a comment. Tell me how crazy I am or tell me now I'm on to something. Who knows? Go to the Big Pat Sports Shop. Copy your Big Pat Sports Talk merch at the Big Pat Sports Shop. Appreciate all the support from everybody that's that's copped some merch. As you can see on the screen, we got plenty of merch to, for sale. Also, this month here, going to be pushing out the videos like crazy this month. Predictions, all that, stats, cuts, everything is going to be be pushed out this this month on Big Pass Sports Talk. Going to be giving you the Giants news all this this month. So stay tuned in. But thank you guys for watching. And until the next episode, 
Peace. This has been a Big Blue Crew production.